So let's just go over the controls a little bit in case you guys, may, maybe you're not aware of how we might use all the controls. Um, so there's three basic controls on this. You've got the global control, you've got the ball control, and then you've got the squash and stretch control. The global control is one that, um, it, it has a lot of different names in a lot of different places. Okay, so for example, at Sony, it was called the master node. At Disney, it's called the TRS, Translate Rotate Scale. At um, Real Effects, it was called something else entirely. Um, so what we use it for, though, is the same in, in all places. You basically only use the global control to move your character where you want him to start in a scene. Okay, so if we were to, say, set up our shot, and let's, let's just use an orthographic camera for our discussion today. Okay, so we're going to just be working exclusively in an orthographic view. And what you might do if you're doing that, you might say create new, um, and we'll just be right or left. Uh, I don't know. Right or left. Okay. So we'll, we'll animate from the left. Um, and then give it a name. Designate it Shot Cam. That just makes it easier to remember which camera you're supposed to be on. And once you get it to where you want it to be, once you get your shot camera where you want it to be, go ahead and lock. So basically highlight all those channels and then say Lock Selected. Now in some cases, this will keep you from messing up what you've done. Unfortunately, in orthographic views, I believe you can still zoom in and zoom out regardless of whether or not you lock these things. So, you know, in a way, it's not as useful as, as it should be in an orthographic view. But you shouldn't be able to move it side to side. Yeah, I, I can't move it side to side. I can't move it up and down. I can just zoom in and out. Okay. So using that global control, like I said, you just position it where you want it to be in the scene. And once you do that, don't touch it again. Just leave it alone for the rest of the shot, okay? Um, because of that, let's say you were doing this in a three-dimensional world. Because you never touch it again, you want to line up your character with whatever would be their major axis of motion, okay? So if I'm gonna be having my character moving primarily, let's say, in the translate Z direction. Let's just see if that's true. I think it is. Yeah, that's the Z direction. Then what I want to do is, you know, let's say I rotate my character as he goes through the shot. I want to make sure that that translate Z axis lines up with the direction I want him to be moving. Okay? Like I said, in, in the case of, of our shot here, it's already lined up fine. But the reason you want to do that is because it makes your life a whole lot easier, okay? If you've got a character who's going to be walking across the scene, and if you line up his direction of travel with that z-axis, then it's basically, you're just going to be moving him along that z-axis. It's one curve that you have to control. If, however, you say, you know what, um, say you put the z-axis here, and then all of a sudden you want him to move in this direction, okay? suddenly you're controlling X and Z. It just becomes more difficult. You know, you want to you try and set up your shot so it's as easy as possible for you to animate. 